Oh, I got to find my little script here. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening. This is the July 11th meeting of the Needham Conservation Commission. I'm Dave Herrer, Conservation Commission Chair. Good evening. This is something new here. As a reminder, this meeting is being broadcast to the town's YouTube channel and also via Zoom and is being recorded for publication, later viewing, and administrative purposes. Before we get started, I'm going to confirm that members and staff are present and can hear me. When I call your name, please respond. Sue? Here. Reed? Here. Bill? Here. I saw Bill. Fred? Oops. Yes, I'm here. Here. Fred and uh, Paulina? Here. And Deb and Clay are, are here. Okay. Um, this open meeting in the, of the Town of Needham Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Gover Governor Healy's March 2023 extension of the open meeting law temporary pro provisions. All supporting materials have been provided to members of the commission and are available on the Conservation Commission website. Um, here are some of the ground rules for the meeting to um, promote effective and clear conduct of our business and ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each hearing on the agenda and introduce the applicant and or their consultant to begin their presentation. After conclusion of the applicant's presentation, I will call on the staff and then each commission member to provide their comments or questions. Please hold until your name is called. After comments or questions from the staff and commission, I will solicit comments and questions from the public. Please mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and please state your name before speaking. And finally, each vote taken during this meeting will be conducted via roll call vote. Okay, so uh, on the agenda, we have uh, the minutes first. Uh, there are two sets of minutes, one from uh, our last meeting, 6-27-2004, and one from the past, 10-28-2021. Uh, any, any comments or corrections? I, I did read them, and, and uh, it looked good. Yeah, they seem to be, uh, you know, pretty concise to the point. Yeah, I'm supposed to be this reader, so that's why. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Barring no further comments, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting, Needham Conservation Commission, 6-27-2024 and 10-28-2021. Second. Okay, uh, let's vote. Uh, Bill? Aye. Sorry. Fred? Fred? Aye. Paulina? Aye. Reed? Aye. And Sue. Aye. Okay. On uh, the uh, enforcement and violation updates, I know we have some discussion on uh, 17 George Agate Road, um, which is listed later on on the agenda. Um, is there anything else, uh, Deb or Clay? No. We haven't got any updates from DEP on the um, the other issue, so nope. Okay, um, so let's go to the hearings. Um, the um, 49 Green Street, the applicant wants to continue the hearing, so um, I'll make so, it. Yep, just open and continue it. Yeah, so we'll open a hearing and uh, I would note that the uh, like Clay and Deb and I had a like a Zoom meeting with with the applicant and uh, you know gave him you know our consensus of uh, what the what the commission's uh, feelings were and hopefully uh, when they come back they will you know have some revisions that would be more in tune with what everybody was thinking at the last meeting. Yep, and I did um, hear back. Um, so I had been questioning. I knew that the golf course leases the property from the town. And I didn't know if part of the lease um, 
they had to notify anyone of tree removals or anything like that. So I asked the town manager's office. Apparently, the lease does say that they need to get permission to remove trees or do anything out of the ordinary. Um, but I did hear today that the commission can issue the permit when they are ready. So that's not an obstacle. Okay, good. Um, so barring any uh, other comments, I would uh, move that we continue the hearing uh, 49 Green Street to our next meeting, I guess, right? That would be the 26th? 25th. The 20th. Right, the 25th. Okay. Second. So, all right. Let's start. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Paulina? Aye. Reed? Aye. And Sue? Aye. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, 443 Central Avenue, DEP file 234-929. Um, my understanding is that um, there may have been some changes made, but uh, we haven't, they haven't, may, they might have been received, but they haven't been distributed. So they, they were received late. So, um, I uh, suggest that we continue the hearing to the to our next meeting. And uh, so I'm, I'll make a motion in, in that regard to continue 443 Central Street to uh, July 25th. Second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Debbie? Oh, excuse me. I'm, <laughs> reading, <laughs> I'm reading the names. <laughs> Um, Paulina? Aye. Uh, Reed? Aye. And Sue? Aye. Okay. The next item is 17 George Agate Road, DEP file 234 um, 30. So. Um, no, Clay left the nine off of it. It's um, not 30. It's, it's supposed to be 9 30. Oh, 9 30. Okay. 234, 9 30. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's open the hearing, and I would just, you know, give a little uh, background. That um, I don't know when this project started, but I know around May, about mid-May, uh, one of the neighbors contacted us and said there was some um, excavation activity, and we investigated that and uh, ordered the. Uh, the developer contracted to stop work because they were uh, installing a uh, propane gas tank. And then they they came to our, our subsequent meeting, which was uh, on the 23rd of May, and they uh, apologized, uh, provided, you know, some, you know, reason. And, you know, we, we accepted their apology and uh, they asked, and we told them they needed to submit a after the fact uh, NOI and all that. And then uh, the builder asked if they could close up the building because it was rainy and and all that. And we uh, we agreed to that. I think we even I, I can't remember if we voted on it or I know we we agreed to it and uh, with the provision that you know they're not going to do any more work on the grounds. And uh, so just the other day, or, and then at some point, like maybe a week or two or th after that, they asked if they could backfill the tank because they felt it was a safety hazard. And we said, okay, but we didn't necessarily say that it was approved. Um, and then just the other day, we noticed that they had continued working on the outside and installed their deck and front porch. Um, and so uh, in the meantime, they submitted their uh, NOI uh, for, for the work. So uh, that's just a little bit of background. I, I see uh, Susan is here. Do you uh, want to you know, go over your NOI? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Hi, I'm Susan MacArthur from MacArthur Environmental Consulting. Um, the applicant is not on the call tonight. Um, he couldn't make it, but um, just as a background, I, so I was hired um, kind of toward the end of May. I delineated um, the stream on May 30th. So I kind of came in after the initial, you know, and I'm the one who did contact Debbie asking, cause when I was out there, you know, I was by myself and I'm like, mm, that hole looks like it could be a hazard. Just, you know, it was open, it had a lot of rain. And um, I was just kind of concerned cause it wasn't fenced in there. So just, you know, if kids are in the neighborhood or something. So anyway, I'm the one who contacted Debbie just, you know, saying, hey, you might wanna allow that to be filled in just because it seems like it might be a hazard. Um, but but anyway, let me just um, talk a little bit about the existing conditions. So um, the subject property is located at 17 George Agate Road, um, Needham. It's a 12,414 square foot lot um, surrounded by single family homes. Um, the lot is, as you had said, currently under construction. Um, and, um, you know, the structure itself is is in place, but I think it, it looked to me when I was out there that it was gutted completely. And, um, you know, they had taken like the front steps off and whatnot. Um, and then they had dug that hole, um, you know. And they cut down a couple of trees. Yeah, and they cut down two trees, he said. Yeah, one was in the front. I couldn't find the other stumps. So I don't know, it might've been covered by soil. I don't really know where the, one, he said, he did tell me two, um, and the one up front is pretty obvious, you know, yeah. it's, it's a big um, stump. But um, there are some stumps on the side, um, on the Sutton Road side that um, I think if you look at Street View, they, uh, Google Street View, they were there when he, they were stumped or, you know, cut prior to him purchasing the property. So I don't know how long ago that was, but um, anyway, on um, the Eastern border of the property, it runs Alden Brook um, and it flows in a south easterly direction into a culvert, which um, goes under George Agate Road. Um, the stream's approximately 10 feet wide or so. Um, the channel is concrete, stone lined, and as I said, I delineated the bank um, on the 30th of May um, with consecutively numbered flags. Um, there is no bordering vegetative wetlands um, associated with the stream it within the vicinity of the property. Um, so we did, um, you know, so I filed the notice of intent for the after the fact, um, cutting down the two trees and digging that hole, with the propane tank hole and the trench. Um, but in looking at the plans, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You're also proposing, it appears that you're proposing a deck and a porch and a front walkway. And um, cause it, you know, didn't look like that was originally um, there. And so, so not only is the NOI for the after the fact, but it is for proposed um, you know, deck, porch, and walkway. Um, and that is all within the riverfront area, the 200 foot riverfront area of Aldenbrook. Um, and I haven't been out there since the, you know, about the time of the filing a couple of weeks ago. So I, I wasn't aware that um, he started construction on the outside of, you know, it's, they are proposed on sauna tubes. Um, yeah, Clay has some pictures if, um, oh, okay. if you're interested. I took today. You took today. Okay. Um, were they still working on it? Like, I don't even No, I think that's complete. Yeah. Oh, it's completed. Oh, great. Um, okay. Um, so the construction of the back deck and the front porch, as I said, are on sauna tubes. Um, and uh, the work at the front of... Oh yeah, yeah. And do you have a the front? 
Lisa back in. Okay. Okay. And then they didn't put the walkway back. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so the work at the front of the house, um, including the walkway, um, would total 270 square feet of alteration. And the back deck is approximately 190 square feet. And um, I'm assuming the back deck is um, slatted, so it's pervious. Um, the front porch, I, I think you showed, is covered. The idea of that photo again? Yeah, it's covered. Okay, so, um, so clearly it's not, not uh, obvious. Um, and then in addition, um, he the applicant is proposing to install a dry well in the backyard, um, as well as planting two uh, native trees on. Um, on the, the Sutton Road side toward the, the back corner um, to replace the two that were taken down by. And I, I mean, I think that is it. Okay, well, straightforward. Um, let me first ask uh, our staff, Deborah Clay, if you got any uh, thoughts or comments. Um, yeah, I think Clay and you talked earlier today um, as did. far as the riverfront standards. Um, so I think, did you have 406 square feet of additional impervious? Um, That's what it has on the plan. Okay. Um, so anyways, you have to do the two to one um, mitigation for the additional square footage. Okay. So you'll need to come up with a location um, and plantings for that. Um, the tree removal, so it's a two to one replacement policy. So you'll need um, two yeah. trees for each one that came down. Yeah. Uh, Can I just interject? Do we have any sure. documentation of when the other trees came down? Because well, I think Clay also looked at the street view or overview yeah. and he concurred that they appeared to come down before the property was purchased. The Google Street View uh, imagery from 2022 showed, uh, I think, two two or three of the stumps along the side along Sutton Road um, prior so, to any of this work, yeah. It, it seems as though that was previous. Um, and so you requested the waiver for the work in the 25 foot um, for the propane tank, um, but that also requires a $1,000 waiver fee okay so and then the commission um can determine you know if they think that they can lower that amount or you know not require them to pay it um but they do need to give a thousand dollar waiver fee for requesting a waiver yeah um i think and just in the application i think um the deed reference you had Middlesex County and some uh -oh. page it was probably from a previous filing. Um, I think that's all that I had. I, I don't know, was the stormwater proposed just for the additional square footage or for the whole structure? Oh, the, for the whole house, I believe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the write-up said the whole structure, which I think is correct. Yeah. The uh, drawings uh, and the calculations were just for the increase. So that needs to be fixed. Anything else, Deb? Clay? I think that's all I had offhand. Okay. Um, go to the commission here. Um, Brad, do you have any comments, questions? Um, well, I, I just wondered if anyone in our 
in the commission uh, has concern about the propane being inside the 25 foot zone. And I, I mean, I take it the, you know, the, it doesn't tend to leak very often, but it has a limited lifespan. You can smell the leak if you, if it starts. Uh, I don't know how one refills it and, and what's done to that. Um, I can address that. It, it's still, it's a liquid. It's stored as a liquid. Okay. Under pressure. Under pressure. That's why it, it has like cylindrical ends and uh, so it's filled with a hose. And if it leaks, it you know generally would evaporate. So you know, it's generally not a, an issue with getting into groundwater. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, I guess uh, we we should we should ask for a um, a list of what trees were what the species of the trees were I, I take it there none that had a, a large diameter over 32 inches um but um let's I, i'd like to see what the proposed replacements are um and this you know what species they're they're thinking about there i did ask what the species were that were removed and he didn't know and i can't tell from the stump you know, sure. Okay. Yeah. Right. But I mean, if the commission has any preference as to, you know, the trees to be planted, I mean, that's. that's I fine. think we just we would just like to know what's proposed before we give us a, a certificate of compliance eventually before we approve whatever the proposal is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Anything else, Ryan? Nope. Um. Bill? Um, so I, I had a question about the uh, propane tank. And as I you're breaking up a little bit, Bill. Now it looks like you're frozen. I today and looked at it. It's uh, in the middle, it's up about a foot um uh, going forward am i still frozen i uh, no. no no but we kind of missed the, some of that yeah i want you oh. to start okay so as, as i looked at the site today the propane tank sticks up like a big barrel about a foot is that how it's going to be is something going to be put around there and you you know they'll be going across the lawn with the to fill it up is that an issue does anyone consider that or where it's in the 25 foot buffer zone am i still freezing up yeah intermittently a little bit but we got the I'm just sure. um i don't know anything about the you know should it be sticking up or not like maybe somebody else has a propane tank that they know yeah well that thing that's sticking up is is to fill um valve you know, and it's in the hose that, um, like a truck comes up, just like an oil truck, and they roll out the hose. The hose isn't very big. It's probably, you know, an inch and a half, maybe. Um, and the truck pumps the liquid propane into the tank. So I would, you know, venture to say that there wouldn't be that much impact uh, from the filling of the tank. Or whatever. Uh, whether you know whether there's it, there, there should be some fence around it or something. I don't know. I I know the town has a, a, a regulations uh, for underground uh, probate tanks, and the fire department has to sign off on it. So I would defer to their judgment uh, with regard to the tank. But I would doubt that that once the tank is backfilled and buried, that it's going to have much of an impact okay um and then at some point that the uh tree plan will be upgraded to show where the two trees were taken down and where the four trees are going to go in yeah i can i will yes okay that's all for now thank you
All right, great. Oh, Paulina, anything? I don't have any questions. All right, how about Reed? Yeah, um, I guess my first question is for the staff, I think, but um, so is, is it correct that if trees are cut down where, you know, without a permit, where there was supposed to be a permit before the property was acquired to, by somebody but buying the property that kind of wipes it clean and um, we shouldn't take that into consideration? Yeah, historically, um, if the work was done before the, the owner purchased the property, we usually don't count those towards the current owner. Okay. I would add to, I think there's a certain amount of nuance. Um, the fact that they were missing in the photos from 2022 means that it's, it, it's been at least two years. It, it could be that those stumps have been that way for the last six or seven. I, I've not tried to investigate further than that, but it's not like they were freshly removed, the house was then sold, and all of a sudden they have these fresh cut stumps. It's It would take further investigation in that uh, avenue. Okay, got it, okay. Yeah, I just, I just didn't know what the past practice of that had been. Um, you know, it strikes me that maybe <laughs> if you buy something, you know, you're, you're assuming that risk, but um, but that's how they treated it. Um, and then in terms of the tree in the front yard that was cut down, um, I think the NOI states it was approximately 30 inches. I mean, I, I guess I would suggest that we treat that as a tree, you know, significant tree in the tree policy and require a three to one, given that, you know, we can't at this point measure what the DVH was. Um, so that's, that's sort of my opinion on that. Okay. Anything else? Um, that is it. All right. Sue, anything? I, yes. Um, I, I'm against having the propane tank in the 25 foot zone. I think it's setting a very bad precedent. Um, that's my feeling about having a propane tank in the 25 foot zone. Um, second thing is, uh, uh, I, I know we would need a, um, a planting plan, including the additional, um, two to one mitigation with a riverfront um and my in addition to uh, the two trees uh, and, and again uh, diversity is really important i feel uh and the third thing is uh there's one dry well in the backyard uh and and that's for the whole house is is, is this house the same footprint as the original one except for the deck the porch and the walkway I believe so. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's just my. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so the dry well, there's one dry well for the whole house. Is that, is that correct? Well, what's being proposed needs to be revised. So um, we'll see what the revised um, plan is for the infiltration. But it's, it's way, yeah. what's shown on drawing is is way undersized. Um, and I, but I do, I do feel strongly about having the propane tank in the 25 foot zone. I think that sets a very poor precedent. That's my feeling. All right. Um, I'm nervous about that one. I, uh, you know, my comments kind of mirror the, uh, the previous comments, uh, everybody. And, uh, you know, we mentioned the uh, infiltration, um, you know, the, need them um, regulation, um, need them um, wetlands regulations require infiltration and the need them bylaw requires infiltration. The need them bylaw requires infiltration for the, uh, for a house this size, just for the roof of the house. Uh, one could interpret the need them wetlands regulation as requiring infiltration for the total um, impervious area. And in both cases, it would be one inch. Uh, in this case, I would suggest that the applicant, you know, go with a larger amount of infiltration. Uh, you know, I kind of understand uh, Sue's comment. However, I feel that at this point, digging the thing up and moving it is going to have more environmental impact than just leaving it there. 
So I still think that's a terrible precedent. I, I think well, that you know, should... I, I understand that. And but they, they shouldn't have done that in the first place. All right. I, I understand that. Oh, but I think at this point, it, what's done is done. I think that the real issue that I would like us to discuss is uh, what are the consequences of this? You know, and either, you know, either you're going to dig it up and move it, or they're going to provide some other compensation for that, or they're going to get fined. Okay. And I'm, I'm, we start out with this. Um, applicant in good faith, allowing them to continue construction while they, you know, um, prepared their application. And, and the fact that they then started um, working on the outside of the house again, contravening our our agreement, I, you know, I'm really disappointed in that. And I don't think that um, that should be without consequence. So my uh, initial um, feeling is that you know we should levy a fine on on this applicant and not not ask them to dig up the thing. Um, but you know we we should discuss that further. I uh, I want to ask Clay if there's anybody in the public uh, forum there because I know there were some neighbors that were concerned about this. I don't know if they came to the uh, hearing or not. Uh, we have one hand rain raised. If you're ready for public comment, I can move them over. Yes. Hi. Hi there. Um, Mark and Irene Francisconi, 5 George Agate Road. We live uh, on the same side and directly next to um, the property and on the other side of the brook. Okay. Okay. So um, echo the sentiments about um, um, work being done without permission um, and also concern about the, um, the location of the uh, the. Of, of the propane tank, um, the 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 builder seems to just do what they sort of want to do. Um, the um, square footage of the house is almost doubling, um, so footprint is the same, but it's going from like a, it's going to almost a 3,800 3, square foot house. So it's a significant increase in. Um, in, in size, but not in footprint. So I just echo my concerns about, um, you know, um, uh, beg for forgiveness instead of asking for permission. Yeah, we we got that. Um, with regard to the the tank, is there you have any specific concern? I mean, oh, other than they shouldn't have done it. Yeah. So the the big concern for us is is. Um, uh, flooding, um, the effect that this may have, um, you know, you may have, you, you may know that this particular culvert flooded dramatically about a year ago. Right, I remember. Uh, and so we're, we're concerned about anything that could possibly affect the water table. Um, and so would like to know what kind of mitigation uh, that, that they could have for that. Yeah, I don't mean to answer for the uh, applicant, but the, the tank is anchored. Uh, the town does have uh, pretty uh, rigorous uh, regulations for underground tanks, propane tanks. And, you know, I believe they got all the sign offs uh, from the fire department and the building department with regard to the tank. So it is anchored, you know, um, theoretically it won't float. But um, I hear your concern. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anybody else in the public? Are we uh, there, Clay? Uh, there are no other hands. Okay. So uh, I know that the applicant has some homework to do to update, revise their uh, NOI. 
Um, but the two issues that, that uh, I heard tonight that uh, require further discussion are one, you know, uh, should the tank uh, be moved and or um, how, to what extent um, do we uh, levy some type of fine or require some additional compensation? When I first thought of the additional compensation, I wasn't thinking that there would have to be some kind of compensation anyway because of the riverfront uh, increase. So, you know, given the size of the lot and, you know, what has to be done already for compensation, that's probably not a good idea, but, you know, I'd, I'll throw that out there. Uh, the, uh, in terms of fining, you know, the maximum fine that uh, commissioning and level, I believe it's two hundred dollars a day. And the, the, you know, I don't know when the first uh, violation started, but we heard about it on five sixteen, which was about two months ago. So, you know, if we find them from that date, that would be uh, twelve thousand um, dollars. If we just find them from the date. Uh, that we asked them, that we gave them permission to close up the house. That's a month ago. That would be six thousand um, dollars. You know, I don't know. I don't know how much it would uh, cost to dig up the tank and move it. I, I believe that, um, you know, the, the precedent issue aside, that there is no, you know, environmental gain of moving a tank. You know three or four feet. Um, in effect, it might be negative. But I, I would prefer to define them rather than making them dig up the tank. Fred, you got your hand up. Uh, yes. Um, I, I was wondering, is there is there any discussion in the town that, that the uh, Alderbrook concrete line sections of Alderbrook might lose its concrete at some point or or not? I, I know from talking with the Public Works Department that they have, they're aware that there are a bunch of channelized streams in town that are deteriorating. And that's an ongoing problem for them. They periodically go in and clean out uh, debris, trees and things like that. Uh, yep. I know that in Linden, at Linden Chambers, that channelized stream behind Linden Chambers, they're putting in for a grant to uh, remove that channelized stream and make it more of a natural uh, U shape. But uh, in that case, the town owns the land. And uh, if they get the money, they could probably do that a lot easier than Alder Brook. Alder Brook. Here's my question is if they, if they, uh, re if they make it U shaped, is it going to, is it going to continue? you to have an impervious lining on the banks or oh. are they going to go go to a model in which the water infiltrates more readily uh, oh, the, yeah i don't know i don't think they've decided that but i can tell you just from an engineering point of view that uh, you know the infiltration in a channel is not that significant the uh the advantage of going to like a, a natural uh you know shape slope to a a channel is that you're literally doubling the storage capacity of, of the channel. It's not an infiltration issue. Okay. It's you know, not so much an infiltration advantage as it is that it's less likely to overflow the banks. No, not necessarily. It, it's just greater storage. You know, yeah. anything's if enough water comes down, anything's gonna overflow. But you know, not to digress, but my understanding of the problem at George Agate cross the culvert crossing the street may be undersized. To these, uh, it certainly was undersized with respect with respect to the storm we had a year ago, and okay. and in my opinion, that's why the water backed up. But uh, Thank yeah, you. I don't. The, the problem with Alder Brook is the property owners own the land right up to there, so that you know, the, if the town was going to make it U-shaped or whatever, they'd have to take land from the property. Whereas at Linden Chambers, I don't think they'll have to take land. I think it's uh, the town already owns it. Got so, it. Okay. All right, Reed, you got your hand up. Reed? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah sorry, I was just on mute. Um, I, so I, I think our regulations say the maximum fine is three hundred dollars per day, but I don't know if there's a somewhere else where that's limited to two hundred. All right. That's... Yeah. So, I, I, but anyway, um, you know, yeah, obviously, I find this whole situation very frustrating, and um, you know, I think like you know, we should definitely, yeah, you know, I think we would want to sort of do a sufficient fine that makes sure that this this kind of behavior is not incentivized in the future. And um, so um, that's my opinion. Okay. Uh, so Yeah, I was just going to say, um, nothing would change my mind. Um, first of all, propane tank, these propane tanks that, are, that have been going in with these new houses, I, I don't like them at all. I mean, I've got one next door to me. Um, uh, and um, nothing would change my mind that, that that propane tank should be out of that 25 foot. They dug the hole already, so they could take it right out. And um, I don't care what what it would take to cost them. Uh, it, it it shouldn't have been done anyway. They were uh, they were doing that without any kind of permit. Um, uh, it's their mistake. Uh, and uh, I just I wouldn't want to see a, a, a propane tank in the twenty five foot. That's all. Okay. Anybody else in law? Any comments? Let's see. How does, I mean, Sue has a pretty uh, <laughs> firm position, I think. Uh, any any other, uh, anybody else want to state their position at this point? Or? You know, we can. Yeah, I mean, I tend to agree with you, Dave. I think it's maybe, you know, more damaging at this point to dig it up, but um, I don't know. There's got to be some consequence. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially when we, I feel that we we gave this applicant in good faith, you know, uh, an opportunity to minimize any loss that they could have. We had every right to stop work. I think we have every right to stop work now. I mean, that's that's something else. Oh. You might want to consider um helena i have two questions the first is deb or clay can you pull up a photo of where this propane tank is located do you have a photo of that oh uh, yeah i think just so we we could see where it is in relation to this wetland wait do you have a photo i have, I have one i think i got one Yeah. Uh, first, here's the the plan that shows where the propane tank lies. The stream runs down here. Here's the the bank flagging, twenty five foot, fifty foot, and this is where Sutton Road meets George Agate. Uh, well, the only actual... a portion of it's in the twenty five foot. Um. So from that same plan, this was the photo from today. This is that cap, I believe, associated. And as you can see, the, there's the tree line, and that's where the slope just beyond that goes down to the, the river. So the 25 is probably just about where the, the dirt clearing is. Yeah. Well, it, it seems like that whole area is already disturbed it disturbed and there's no grass there so if they dig it up it's not really causing any more harm they're not digging in the wetland they're just digging in an area that's already been dug in there it is. um and then my other question is was was this an enforcement order did we do an enforcement order on this one or stop work order or anything um so i did stop work um and then they did come to the commission. I think I stopped work on the day of one of our meetings and they came to the meeting that night. And um, that's when we discussed that they could continue to work inside, but they needed to hire a wetlands consultant to delineate the stream and put together an after the fact notice of intent. So I don't think we issued an enforcement because they 
you know, came to the meeting right away and um, we didn't, I guess, feel that that was necessary at the time. Yeah, we were, we were trying to be uh, accommodating. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's necessary now, now that they've continued work without permission? Well, I think that if the commission's going to consider finding them, that we would have to put together an enforcement order. Um, you know, whether, you know, it's at your discretion if you just wanted to to find them based on the um, doing the front porch and the deck um, portion of the work um, or all the way back to when they removed the trees and, um, and installed the propane tank. But I think that we would need to issue an enforcement in order to issue fines. I don't have any other comments. Okay, you know, Sue, you got your hand up again. Yeah, I know, my hand's up again. Um, I just <laughs> want to say one thing is that if that stays within the 25 foot, even if it's not along the 25 foot, I feel it just sets a terrible precedent that people, uh, you know, they'll just go ahead and pay to, to put I mean, these propane tanks are going up with all these new houses. Um, and that they'll just pay for it. I mean, it, it, you know, once it's been done, then yeah, okay, so you just pay for it and get it in the 25 foot and you'd have more more space. That's how I feel. I just think I think it's a really bad precedent. Okay. Uh, Bill? Uh, I, I'm just wondering if we should discuss in some manner the uh, part of their application is uh, a waiver request to put it in the 25 foot zone. And it asks various questions. I'm switching back and forth on my tabs here. It asks various questions like uh, strict compliance will result in severe economic hardship, et cetera. And then another one, a credible expert has demonstrated the resource area does not protect the public interest. And um, the applicant gives a response to these for our attention so that we will agree with them that it's okay to put uh, the propane tank in the 25 foot area. And I agree with Sue, I feel the same as Sue does, um, so I won't repeat her. Um, but at some point, do we answer these, um, these, these narratives or answers to these waiver requests one at a time uh, going forward and also for this particular applicant. So they're satisfied with uh, just our, our answer. No, we can just deny it. We don't have to, you know, the burden of proof is on them. And, you know, basically uh, my opinion is I don't think they've established uh, the uh, substance for a waiver. Okay. But that, but that doesn't mean we can't, you know, let them let them do it. So I, you know, I think uh, we got opinions on both sides. And, um, you know, I would, you know, go to the whatever the consensus of the uh, commission is, and you know, we could have like a little straw poll here. I don't think we need to vote on that, but uh, I think uh, from what I hear right now, that and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that. Uh, Sue and Bill feel strongly that the tank should be moved. Uh, Reed and myself feel that you know we could let this go if, as long as there was some significant fine. Uh, Lena and Reed, I mean Fred, I'm I'm not sure what your position is, but uh, there's six of us here, right? Right. Yeah, I mean. My part of my wanting part of my inclination to be flexible is that the way the stream is channelized, it's 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 almost not really a wetland. I mean, you know, it's it's like there's a there's a canal back there. And um, but I I uh, I agree that um, we there needs to be consistency in how we decide things. And it might be harder for us in the future if we just uh, decide to to look the other way on this. So I'm, I'm being swayed, I guess. 
thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I would, I'm not an attorney, but I would say that, you know, this whole thing about a, a precedent is a red herring. Uh, we get to decide on any waiver, you know, for whatever reasons we want. And, uh, you know, if, you know, if somebody wants to put forth a waiver, we look at it on a case by case basis. And the conditions for a waiver are, uh, are pretty, uh, they're spelled out in the regulations, you know. I, on a, you know, on a big scale, I, I, I think in general, if the way, if, if, uh, the, the re reason for the waiver doesn't really represent the public interest, then, uh, then I would tend not to uh, grant the waiver. For instance, uh, you know, maybe sometime down the road when we're looking at Lyndon Chambers that project, uh, because. For the nature of the project and it's so close, you know, there might be a small intrusion on the 25 foot zone of that project. But if you look at the whole project, it is in the public interest. So that would be a case where I think a waiver would be appropriate. Um, in this case, you know, I don't think the waiver is necessarily appropriate, but I'm just, you know, I just felt that it was, you know, it's already done. It's it's not going to have a negative impact. And as long as, uh, the, the applicant was sufficiently fine that that would be enough to determine. But like I said, whatever this commission decides on, as, as a, you know. So it's not, so it, it would not be a, a problem if we denied the waiver request, but then gave uh, an order of compliance for the overall project to have it stay there? No, I, I, I think we would have to approve the waiver if we're going to let them keep the tank. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. That's what I thought. No. But so they also need to give us the thousand dollar fee um, associated with the waiver request. So if you wanted to allow them to keep it there, um, you could also say we're going to keep the entire thousand um, dollars for work in the 25 foot. So, you know, you also have some some leeway that way as far as if you wanted to charge them to keep it there, essentially. Yeah, well, I I don't think we should go down that path. If the, if the, if the majority of the commission doesn't want to grant a waiver, then, you know, we should, you know, just ask the, the applicant to withdraw the waiver and move the tank. So, and, I, and maybe we can decide that tonight by the straw poll. So right now it's two to two. So anybody want to <laughs> themselves, or we can, you know, we can discuss this at our next meeting as well. But uh, they they are coming back to the next meeting, correct? Yeah. Um. Yeah, they they will be. I don't know whether the applicant will will show for the next meeting. I don't know. If they don't show, then you know we'll just continue it. Yeah. You know? I would like I would like to hear the applicant. You know, tell us why they're not paying attention to our regulations. On a simple project like this, which compliance to which, of which would be very, very easy. And I don't think the commission on this project is imposing any kind of onerous requirements. I, I, I frankly think that, um, 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 denying the, the propane gas tank on the 25 foot would set a very good precedent. This this particular builder has just gone ahead and done things um, without any permit. Um, it, it's like there are no rules. Um, and I think it might set, a, I mean, I, the important thing is, it, is that it's a, a propane gas tank, um, you know, putting in, that you're putting in the, within the 25 foot. It, other things, yeah, yeah. But this is a this is a propane gas tank. Um, yeah, but I just think what, the what's what, what's unique about a propane gas tank? It scares me. It scares me. Um, yeah, but that, that's, I have one next door. I have one next door, and um, um, there's never um, been an explosion of an underground propane gas tank. You know, it's, well, not yet. Well, um, I mean, but, Something that's, like that. That's not an environmental issue. I think that uh, the environmental issue is, like you said, it's you know, it's it's in the twenty-five foot zone. We have a 
25 foot no disturb uh, policy and they violated it. So, you know, they can either, yeah, but, they can ask for I, a waiver and we can vote on the waiver. And that's, I, that's what's before us. So, I think it's quite a heavy thing that he put, uh, that they put the, the, the propane gas tank within the 25 foot. I think that's really um, um, stretching things, um, you know, with this not even following any regulations otherwise. That's yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I agree. But, you know, we got to make a decision. Right. Are we either make this decision tonight or we can put it off till the next meeting. But the, in my mind, the decision is with this issue in particular is either we're going to allow the waiver or accept their waiver or not and so i was just suggesting that we we do like a straw poll and if there's a you know four people that don't want to issue a waiver then you know we ought to tell that to the applicant just so that we don't waste our time so we don't issue a waiver we don't issue a waiver and then that that automatically um Includes that they will just they would move the tank out of the twenty five foot. No work in the twenty five foot, correct? Well, they have to they have to uh, dig it out, which is right. That's work in the twenty five foot. Right, but the hole's already there. There's no hole. They backfilled it. The what? They backfilled the tank. Okay, so the tank is installed. There's no hole. In order to move the tank, they have to excavate around the tank and, uh, you know, move the excavation about, uh, I don't know how many feet, th three or four feet, and then they have to uh, move the tank. Uh, the tank is already attached to a uh, concrete pad. Uh, I don't know how they would do it. You know, if it was me, I'd get a crane there and just pick it up and move it over. But, uh, you know, it's up to them. So I know there's other, so they need, um permission from the fire department and yeah, yeah. so there was other boards that they would need to go through in order to move it yeah supposedly they already got their fire department permit yeah I, but if they're moving it wouldn't they need to get yeah, it yeah they'd have to do it again yeah i um you know i've seen the fire department checklist and it's it's basically safety really you know not environmental really but it's just that they never came before the Conservation Commission. Yeah, yeah, before they're, they're, we know that. We know that. We know that. Yeah, I know, I know you know. I know you know. Okay. But I, I, that's a big deal here. Polina, Polina, you have your hand up. Yes, I think I understand Sue's position. I mean, I personally can be swayed either way, uh, but I understand Sue's position. It's an underground tank storing, you know, liquid that if, you know, if anything happens to the tank, if rusts or something, it's close to the stream and gas or the propane can enter the stream or just the you think, areas do you think so, two feet two feet will make much of a difference if it's moved i mean it's the same tank at the same location mm, pretty much i mean that's why it could be swayed either way but i think we're also sue is coming from it it's you know they were asked to stop and provide a notice of intent they said they would, but then they continued with the work without our permission. So, you know, there's, yeah. I understand where Sue is coming from. <laughs> are, you, are you thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> I can be swayed either way. I, I think I might need to think about it and I would want to continue right. it to the next meeting. Okay, um, that's fine. But... Bill, you had your hand up? Well, I, I wondered if it would be uh, worthwhile to get from the uh, contractor how much it would cost to move it. And, do we uh, in you some won't get, you won't get the real answer <laughs> okay but uh that was one of the um uh reasons for the waiver that it would it could be excessively expensive so um you know that would be rather than hearing it could be excessively ex expensive knowing the number and that would be factored into my decision anyways i would but, say uh, I, I would say it's not going to be that expensive. It'd be less than five thousand dollars. I I feel the same way. So I, I would you know toss that answer out from the uh, waiver. That, you know, um, and then the other reason why they asked for a waiver. Uh, one of the reasons was that it doesn't do anything to improve. I might not have all the words correctly here because it's on. Another, I don't have it in front of me. 
but that um, it would actually, uh, it's a pre-existing lawn and they're just gonna put it in and then reseed it. And it's not gonna change the effectiveness of that area uh, to, to make the wetlands and the river uh, work correctly. But my thought is that a propane tank is certainly going to change the effectiveness of an area to uh, a healthy lawn, a good pervious lawn is going to take the water, the, the surface water away more effectively than if it had a tank underneath it or it didn't. So that would be my response to his, the waiver request. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't disagree with you. I think, the you know, the language of the waiver request is just, you know, it's not that meaningful, you know. The tanks in the, you know, in the ground. I think environmentally, moving it two or three feet is not going to make a difference. So this whole this whole argument is about, oh, uh, you know, I hate to use the word precedence. You know, it's not the Supreme Court or whatever. But the the whole argument is, should they be penalized for uh, not following the rules? And I think we all agree that yes, they should be penalized. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? No. So now the question what? is now the question what? is, what is the form of that penalty? Do we make them move the tank? It's only five thousand. Spend five thousand dollars or whatever, or do we fine them? Or, or, so to me, that's the essence of, of this argument. So I, I feel it's just trying to make it right. That's all. I mean, I, it, this is wrong. I know, but I just, with, with the, the concept of making it right is making it right environmentally or making it right, you know, administratively or making it right because we're upset. With our regulations, with our regulations. Yeah. Well, you know, regulations get violated all the time and that's why you have fines. So um, anyway, Reed, you got your hand up? Yeah. If we find them, where does that money go? Does that just go to the town of Needham? Oh, um, it goes to Deb and Clay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it does. It just, yeah, it I mean, I, I guess I feel like the, the benefit of having, you know, the maximum fine here in Needham's coffer is it outweighs sort of the benefit of moving the tank. And just to clarify, so our bylaw is wrong. It's not the three hundred dollars. It is. It's a hundred dollars for the first offense and two hundred for each other offense per day, um, which is often trees being removed without permission. So we would charge a hundred for the first tree, and then two hundred for each other tree they cut down. So that's the town bylaw is what we go by. And then, but. How about a fine every day that they're in violation? No. Yeah, there's all different, all different all right, well, offenses I'll... that you can calculate against. But right. Deb, is it by day? Is it per day that you're talking about, Deb, or is it just a, a it one? It depends. Like trees, it's not per day because it's just an action of cutting down a tree. Oh, so that's kind of a one-time thing. If they put fill in a wetland and they need to remove it. Um, every day that fills in there is is another offense. Um, if they had an order of conditions, and you know they they didn't follow them for each um, special condition, that would be an offense. So it depends on what the offense is, how you kind of figure it out. Okay, so um, I don't know. I like I like the idea of giving us one more, giving us two weeks to to think about this before we have to vote on it. Yeah, that's fine. And that also gives you time to revise the plan and, and kind of update what the commission was looking for. Yeah, for, for our next, can, can we have Claire, or I guess, I guess it'd be helpful to know what like the maximum fine would be like exactly what we're talking about in terms of monetary amounts. Okay. All right, great. Any other uh, comments? So I said you got your hand up, Sue. But, um... Oh, I didn't mean to. Whoops. I can't okay. get it out. I'm done. I'm done. All right. Um, um, Susan, you have a. 
Yeah, I, I just want to close by saying, um, so the applicant, not that I'm condoning anything, but, um, you know, originally when he dug the hole for the tank, um, he immediately or soon thereafter hired me, you know, and I did file the notice of intent per the commission's request. So um, I think that he was trying to, you know, comply with what the commission wanted. So I feel that, um, you know, retro finding him for the digging the hole for the tank and installing the tank, of course, um, you know, isn't um, necessarily, I don't know how to say it. it, it yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. You know, yeah. but however, the, you know, the deck and the porch, of course, yes, that was blatant that, you know, he messed up and um, that was done, I think, within the last two weeks. So just, I just want to close by saying that. So, yeah, but I, but also, you know, you're aware that uh, when they went, the contractor went and dug the hole and put in the tank, uh, he didn't come to us. Uh, somebody, one of the neighbors came to us and said, well, hey, what's going on here? And then we went to, to the contractor and then the contractor contacted you. So his, his action was not, uh, you know, unilateral in his part. It was, uh, you know, in response to uh, our- Yeah, he claimed it was the propane company that did it yeah. kind of behind his back kind of thing. And, and further, he had in his possession a memo that Clay wrote basically saying that, you know, uh, based on the, uh, you know, your initial building permit ac application, you're not disturbing the outside of the ground or whatever, therefore, you know, you don't need an application. But if you do, you know, you got to come back to the commission and submit an application and, uh, you know, doing it beforehand rather than afterwards is, is usually uh, easier. So, I, you know, I don't think that uh, the contractor has any excuse, you know, ig ignorance of, of the regulations is it's not an excuse. However, he explained to us that it was something that happened and, you know, he apologized and we felt, uh, you know, that he was contrite and, and that's why we let him continue uh, doing work inside. So I think the commission was trying to be accommodating. We weren't trying to bring a hammer down on this applicant. And I, I still don't think we want to bring a hammer down on him, but on the other hand, we don't want uh, to, uh, you know, show that we're not, uh, you know, enforcing the regulations. Right, I understand. Okay, so uh, if that's uh, the, uh, the bulk of the comments here, then I uh, would move that we continue this hearing to, uh, the 25th of July, if that's okay, Susan. Um, I do have another hearing, a conflict um, for that night. I mean, I do intend to um, call Mr. Juice and talk to him about, you know, what, what has transpired tonight, but um, maybe Deb, I can coordinate. Well, timing. With, timing, I, you know, maybe I can be first at the other hearing and later in the night, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. We can we can work that out, but we we should continue with the date certain. And if you can't make it, then we can continue it again. Okay, so yep. you know I move that we uh, continue this hearing for uh, seventeen George Agate Road uh, to July twenty fifth. Second. Okay, let's vote. Sue. Aye. Reed. Aye. Bill. Aye. Fred. Aye. Paulina. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, thank you, Susan. Okay, thank you. Nice. Thank you. Okay. So the last item on the agenda is uh, 25 Mallard Road, DEP file 234909, request for partial certificate of compliance. I don't know. Did anyone show up in the audience for this, Clay? that you can see. Is anyone there? Um, there's nobody with their hand raised. Okay. Because I did, 
I just went out to the site today because I was on vacation and such. So um, um, I did meet out there with the new homeowner um, kind of to discuss uh, my findings um, of my um, of my site visit to review the COC request. And um, I did send a last minute email to the contractor to see if he wanted to come as well. Um, so I guess neither of them have. Um, so essentially this, this was a, a single family house project um, that got an order back in July last year. And it's um, a portion of it is within the 200 foot riverfront area to the stream across the street. And so as part of this um, project, they had to do the mitigation plantings um, for the increase in the impervious in the in the riverfront area. Um, do you have the plans at all, Clay? Do you have the um, what was proposed? Um, so yeah, one sec, I'll pull okay. those up. So they came before us with a a planting plan um, for the square footage that they needed to make up and um, and the species they were going to plant. Um, so there was three planting areas they were proposing to do the mitigation plantings in. Um, so this is what they had proposed. Um, so we needed to keep the mitigation within the 200 foot riverfront area. So they proposed those two hatched areas on the left and right hand side. And then right in front of the house, they proposed that planting area. Um, so we, I know we had discussion about specifically the planting area in the front because, you know, they're supposed to let that go back to, to being natural and um, not maintain that area and whether that was even really feasible. Um, if someone was purchasing this house that they were going to let that area be natural. Um, but we were ensured that, you know, they were going to be fine with it. And the two planting areas on either side, um, they're supposed to have three um, permanent bounds to demarcate those two areas, um, you know, to keep them from maintaining or, or mowing those. Um, so maybe like a month and a half ago, their landscaper, um, Michael Lenahan, contacted me and said that the new owners um, wanted permission to take the planting area on the right-hand side of the house and relocate that up against the house. Um, so I said, you know, why would a homeowner want to suddenly have a mitigation planting area directly, you know, adjacent to their house that they have to let go? And it's just going to have weeds and, you know, everything in there. And, you know, would an owner really, you know, approve of not maintaining that? So he said, yes, yes, yes. So I said, OK, I need something in writing from the people purchasing the property that they understand the ramifications of not being able to maintain those areas. And then I need you to record that at the registry of deeds so that the next people that purchase the house understand that they're buying um, a property where they're not allowed to maintain essentially, you know, around the front of the structure and the side of the structure. Um, so I did receive those items. So we did receive the um, request for the certificate of compliance. It would be a partial because there's a two year monitoring. Um, do you have the as built plan, Clay? So we received this um, as the as built plan. So if you recall, there were three planting areas, and the as built shows seven planting areas at this point, um, including. Can you point out that one? Yeah, back there, they included that area. I think there's one shrub planted in there. Um, the planting area along the left-hand side, um, if you can see the front right by Mallard Road, 
they're counting that as part of the mitigation square footage um, to the right of the driveway where the lamp post is and um, you know along the front and then wrapping around the side of the house as well so they have all these different kind of planting areas now um, and so I went by today clay has pictures to show and um you know, so I, I told the the homeowner what the purpose of these um, these planting areas are and the riverfront regulations um, and how they just appear to kind of look like landscape planting areas now. Um, they have been mulched um, and they are, you know, separated into those seven different areas. And the permanent demarcation, um, you know, is only probably like an inch or two off the ground and the plaques are located in the middle of these landscaping areas, as you will see. So they're not even delineating. So that's the front of the house and you can see the planting areas. Um, yeah, so that's the one that they relocated from the right-hand side up against the house. Um, the one to the left of the front door, that area was, um, that was approved, um, in the original order. Okay. Um, that's that little circular area in the front by the street. Um, so I did talk to the homeowner today and she was concerned about some of the weeds extending out onto the front walkway and whether they could be removed and, I said, you know, if they're counting this as part of the mitigation, you know, this is supposed to just be left alone and go back to nature. Um, so that is one of the um, placards. You can see it's kind of up against the house within the planting area. Just kind of another view of that. So that's, you know, supposed to be one of the... Uh, the mitigation areas along the front of the house. So that's another one. There's one dogwood tree planted in there. That's kind of to the right. Yeah. In that area. So they have the placard kind of right in front of the tree. So that's the location. So it was supposed to be that portion of the mitigation on the right-hand side was supposed to be separated from the house um, with just an area in between, I guess, to mow and the permanent demarcation. So this is kind of what it looks like now um, with the demarcation within those planting areas. That open area is another property? Um. Yeah. From from the plot plan, you can see that they, you know, it, it's a pretty narrow lot. Um, but the plantings were originally proposed to be separate from the house. Um, so I talked to the owner at length. I said, you know, the, the weeds that are coming up in the front that you're concerned about, um, you know, interfering with people walking by. I'm like, those things can come up in all of those planting beds when they look like planting beds around your house. And, you know, you're not supposed to be maintaining them. So you're just supposed to let whatever grows in there grow. Um, and she, you know, said that she understood that. So this, this would be a partial. Um, the surveyor didn't have any deviations listed um, as far as the, the construction of the house. So there would still be a two year, you know, that's the one shrub by itself. Um, so there would still be the two year monitoring period. Um, so that's looking up the, the right hand. So that's like the side of the planting area. Um, so it is mulched and there's the, the placard kind of in the middle. So I guess, um, I guess it's up to you if you, think that you can issue the the partial what you want them to do do you want them just to pull those um those permanent bounds out to define the areas and put them on something taller that won't get grown over 
Um, it, so it sounds like they made some effort to comply. Mm -hmm. I, I think the value of the scattered plantings is minimal. Um, you know, after the two year period, they're probably going to lower it all down or whatever. I, putting plantings right up against a house is not good practice. You know, usually right. it's recommended you have like two feet or something, you know, be two, otherwise you're going to get mold and uh -huh. other kind of cells. So, yeah. I don't know. You got Paulina, you got your hand up. Yeah. I I just want to say it looks very beautiful, but I don't think, but it looks like landscaping. And I, I think know. the placards are inserted in the center rather yeah. than create a boundary that actually specifies don't go beyond this. This is a mitigation area. So I think those boundary markers should be pulled to the edge of where the mitigation area is they should be a little higher so that when vegetation does overgrow you can still see them and i also think that i mean it shouldn't be mulched it shouldn't be right up against the house even that dogwood it's beautiful dogwood but it's surrounded by mulch which looks like landscaping which mm -hmm. is gonna eventually you know i don't think i think it's beautiful but doesn't serve the purpose that we are requesting from them so i I would not be comfortable issuing even a partial certificate of compliance until they make it, I guess, look like a mitigation area. Um, and then the other thing is, I mean, it's a brand new house now, but it will eventually need work. So the, that whole area will probably be trampled if they put ladders or if they're painting or even like, you know, those shrubs are going to overgrow and you're going to have to cut them back. So people are going to be constantly going in there, disturbing it. So I, I also don't think putting a mitigation area right up against the house is practical. And I wasn't sure. Um, I, I, I know. So we, we did approve it right up against the house in the front. Mm -hmm. um, but on the side, like where those mm -hmm. AC units are, I mean, you're going to have to cut those shrubs so they don't block mm -hmm. the AC unit. And, um, and then I also, I wasn't sure on the original plans, do they say they were going to put like a seed mix in there or did they actually say they were going to mulch because usually they put like a seed mix and not and let it yeah. revegetate um but those are all my those are all my problems with this um and other people may have different opinions but that's just right yeah out. they did not propose a seed mix um but I did um, tell Michael Lenahan that they that they couldn't mulch the areas. Hey, Reed, you got some comments? Yeah, I don't know how we could say this is even remotely compliant. I mean, um, and I, do we know what was actually planted? Um, because, like, I think I saw like a mop head hydrangea in there, and um, which you know, not at all native, um, and. I think that they had some other plantings mixed in with the approved mitigation plantings. I okay. think there was um, maybe like boxwoods up against the the two sides in the front door. Um, I did find the plantings that were proposed. Okay, was there, um, but I think there are additional plantings in those areas. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but you know, just. In addition, right? I mean, like this is not at all serving, I think, the purpose of what it's supposed to be serving. Um, I mean, I'm, not, granted, I'm also not entirely sure what to do about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's difficult in situations, I think, where so the stream is located across the street behind the house uh, that's across the street. Um, so usually you try to do these areas as close to the resource area as possible. But once again, that's across a street and um, and behind a house. So and we wanted the plantings to be within um, within the 200 foot riverfront area, which kind of goes through the middle of the property. Um, so as far as locations to put these plantings um, based on the size of the new house, um, they were kind of stuck with those with those areas.
Anybody else? So I guess we go back and tell them that it should conform to what their original proposal was that we approved. Yeah, so, so they're removing the mulch, proposing a native seed mix to put in the mitigation areas. Um, you moving want- it, Moving it away from the house. Move it away from the house. Okay. Fred, you got a comment? Um, yeah, uh, remind me, uh how how close to the wetland is this mitigation for it's within what buffer so this is the 200 foot riverfront area this is the outer riparian zone and uh, the reason the reason so they put it up oh thank you so our jurisdiction ends um at the second second line the 200 foot riparian zone yeah, there, I don't think there was a buffer zone involved. No, no. So the stream, Rosemary Brook, is across the street behind the house that's across the street. I I just don't have as I don't have enough of a of a library of previous cases to to go on to to judge how how this compares with other similar i mean most of the ones where we're trying to be really strict about the uh the, the plantings and uh and 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 the and the maintenance it feels like are are within closer proximity to the to the streams and the wetlands i mean i think i think for future reference it's probably unrealistic to to give permission for people to do this so close to the house because as as others have pointed out you know it, they're, they're just not going to be able to keep their hands away from the pruners and the and 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 maintenance and painting and so forth it, it's it's just going mean, to there was no other place there was no other place to put it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah, putting it in the backyard would be nice, but that's outside of the 200. So, so I, I'm wondering if we can get creative, though. I mean, like, can can we ask them to, you know, grant a conservation easement or something in the backyard and put the, you know, where we would have the ability to enforce that back there? I, I, I'm just trying to, like, think of a way to not well, force them, you know. To, to... Let's go back a step. We already approved the plan. Yeah. Okay, so if we're going to go back and withdraw that approval, that's one thing. Oh, or if we're no, going I, well, just as a compromise, I mean, as an option for them, right? Like, you know, if they don't want to, if they actually, you know, because I don't think they're going to actually, when it push comes to shove, turn turn their front yard into you know a naturalized area. It doesn't seem like that. That's what they claim, and that's what I have in writing, and that's yeah. what's on the deed. So. But it, but at this point, all we can hold them to is what they had proposed, right, and what we had approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm also we can't go back. And, we can't go back and reopen the uh, right the order of conditions. Can no, understood. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that we can force them to. I'm just saying if, if they actually, you know, if if, if we want to get creative and, and they want some options here. Yeah, I just don't think if it's completely outside our jurisdiction. Yeah. That well, then, yeah, then then they have to put it the way we approved it, right? Or something. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. deviation that we agree with. Oh, Polina, you got your hand up again. Did um, it was more of we're looking at whether or not they're compliant with what with what was approved, and to me, they are not compliant with what was approved. Right. Clay. Yeah, I just wanted to to bring up, I guess, the mechanics of this. Um, correct the the request for certificate compliance is really in context of what was originally approved. Um, I believe that this order is still open and valid. Uh, it has not expired. I think we're in. I think it was granted last year. If they wanted to yeah. change the mitigation, 
my recommendation would be to have this discussion under a request for amended order of conditions that that it wouldn't be something that you would approve here in the coc that this is a significant change it's significant deviation um, so if they're not going to have the the plantings and mitigation as proposed but if they were to consider something like um yeah, a conservation easement or some other one of those non quantifiables under those riverfront standards or however you want to do it i'd recommend holding that conversation until they've submitted a request to amend the order of conditions and then you could be looking at those compliance and how to bring it into compliance um, with a new plan of record after butters have been notified after it's been reopened for that kind of change um, i do think there is a mechanism there uh, that that is likely also more appropriate than the request for coc given the the amount of deviation so yeah i I agree with that. Um, with the exception of the the work closer on the right hand side, um, you know, they did put in the plantings. Um, we would tell them they need to get rid of the mulch and put in a native seed mix um, and to move the placards to the outside. Um, so it's really that area that they said they wouldn't maintain that's that's gone up against the right hand side of the house um the front we already approved and they have to let that go um so as far as coming in with an amended plan and all of that you know i don't know if it's worth it if they can just do those um mostly minor changes um you know they could probably pull the mitigation from the right hand side out you know a few feet without you know it being horrible and remove the mulch and seed the other areas and move the demarcation and then i think they would probably be in compliance and we could probably issue a partial that sounds good to me yeah can you communicate that to them? I can communicate that to them, yes. All right. I'm okay with that. Anybody opposed? Fred, you got your hand up? Well, can can we just keep it in the back of our mind that the, the homeowner might respond to this by saying that that they don't, you know. That I this mean, they could even leave it. Mind. They could leave it and make the additional area. You know, if they like having these plantings there, they don't want to go through the trouble of of moving them. Yep. Then, okay, then just make the planting area like proposed. You know, keep a little mowing strip in between, but then plant the right hand side like it is on the plan. Gotcha. Okay. And um, they could have that option. Right. Okay. It's a negotiation that we will sort of enter in with them on this. Yeah, I'll I'll talk to them. The home, homeowner was really really nice, um, you know, and and they're yeah, they probably didn't what they knew. Um, so yeah, so I'll I'll talk with the homeowner and the landscaper and come to an understanding. And um, so. All right. So should we, should we just have them withdraw their request, or how do we do that? I would, I would communicate to them the uh, the comments, you know, the collective comments that we have, mm -hmm. and ask them to revise it. Okay. I think they could also withdraw it, or or the commission could move to deny the request. There's no reason why they can't resubmit the request. Yeah. At, at any point. Yeah, I just don't want to have it on the agenda all the time. So you want to vote to deny it? Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, why don't I tell them to withdraw it? Okay. And then just refile after they have fixed everything, updated the as-built plan. Um, and I'm confident that the commission could approve it. Okay, that sounds good. Well, I thought this was going to be a short meeting for me. <laughs> I know. I know. We're um, like, things are dropping like flies, but. I wanted to uh, just mention a couple of things before we uh, adjourn. 
one, uh, we got a new uh, member of the commission, so hopefully they'll be in place by our next meeting, but uh, not, uh, I can't guarantee that because the select board has to uh, to approve it. And, uh, you know, I think we had three candidates and the candidate we selected, I think is an excellent, um, would be an excellent member. She's a uh, environmental professional with, with a lot of experience. And I think uh, it'll really help us. So uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we had talked last time about revising, updating some of the regulations that we have. And uh, so I just want to encourage everybody to think about that. I, uh, I did talk with Katie, the assistant town manager, about the mechanism that we could use to, to do this. And uh, I don't know if we talked about this before, but I suggested that like uh, any of the commission members could submit comments. And we could talk about the form of the comments in a second, but could submit comments to uh, say Deb or Clay and uh, they could compile the comments and then put that li compiled list on the agenda for any meeting. And then we could uh, discuss that at the meeting. So it wouldn't violate the open meeting. And so as far as the nature of the comments, I, I think that it would be helpful for uh, people just to uh, suggest in whatever form you you feel appropriate what needs to be tightened up or changed uh, rather than getting into the specific wording of the regulations. Uh, right now, I'd focus on the regulations because I'm, that's a easier to deal with than the uh, bylaw, the bylaw. You know, it's got to go to town meeting and all that. But uh, the bylaw allows us to promulgate regulations, provided we have a notice hearing, which, you know, once we decide on what we want to do and have a final draft, then we can notice a hearing and, you know, get that uh, get that moving. So, you know, one one approach would be just to go down to, through the regulations and, and note the... Uh, the paragraph and you know any comment you have about the paragraph and, you know it doesn't have to be formal it doesn't have to be uh you know final language it could just be an idea uh, a couple of things that i always thought we uh we should do is uh, you know formally incorporate our uh, policies into the regulations and I think we have a couple of policies right now. We have the tree policy or the tree guidelines, and we have the uh, the uh, guidelines for habitat assessment that I think are you know unique to Needham. I want to draft like a guideline for uh, stormwater, you know, that ties into uh, the stormwater bylaw because that has caused a lot of confusion I think in past meetings and. Uh, you know, Deb brought up the concept that we could expand the buffer zone. You know, that's not uh, out of the question. Um, I think uh, this came up in a couple of the past, uh, you know, applications. The uh, we got the twenty-five foot no disturb zone. It's the fifty foot zone. So I think that you know. Um, this this one uh, application last week, I believe, for the last meeting, you know, there was fifty foot zone that might be a habitat zone or whatever. You know, that I think that uh, could be tightened up a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, trees. I, you know, even though we revised the tree uh, guidelines, uh, there are still some remaining issues. So I think we could tighten up. Not the least of which is, you know, we talk about uh, shrubs versus trees, but we never really talked about the size of shrubs, or like the size of evergreen trees. Or some people suggested, you know, we had preferred trees, maybe narrow the list. So there's a lot that people might have on their minds. So I think you know, we 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 could change, and so we got to get started somewhere. So I, my suggestion is just to, you know, make some notes and. Uh, Submit the notes, and then we could, you know, move from there to maybe a marked up draft and and uh, specific language. 
Any any thoughts? Excellent idea. I know it's time consuming, and you know I would just say to everybody, put in what time you can. It's not something we can do in, in two weeks. No, but... no, no. But I think we got to get started. It took it took a year to get the, some minor modifications to the tree policy down. You know, I would say I would throw out a a timeline of you know we get this done by the end of the year. That would be great. But again, I uh, I know that everybody's uh, busy and time is precious, so. Just encourage uh, people to read the regulations and to think about, uh, you know, what could be clarified, what could be expanded, what, uh, you know, what um, what we think uh, would improve the overall regulation. As far as the process, I think the process is pretty well established. It kind of segues with the with the state uh, process. The only thing that that I noticed, and this is something that's not apparent, is that over the past year, there's been like three applications to us that we approved with conditions and all that. We went through the whole routine, and then they go to the ZBA and get denied. And I see that as a waste of our time. And so one of the, the, the regulation as it reads now says that we may request that the ZBA, that's the Zoning Board of Appeals, that gets resolved before we enter the, entertain the application. And, you know, so at a minimum, I think we need, we should be aware of, uh, of what the, uh, what the, uh, you know, issue is. And if it's gonna be some contentious issue, then, you know, we might be better off asking them to, you know, get the uh, approval before we waste our time. No? Yeah, it makes sense. No, yes. I agree with that. Yeah. I yeah, guess I, the, you know, I, the only intricacy there is if, if, if they're asking to build it in the buffer zone, but um, then it's kind of a chicken and egg thing, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, also, I've also seen in a few other places, in a few other towns, when you submit an NOI, you have to share it with certain mm -hmm. departments and they list out the departments. So the other departments have a chance to review it and make any comments in that we way. We do have that requirement. Yeah. Uh, not everyone does it. And I think it's it's easier with all the towns that are on the electronic system where all the departments make their comments into that. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, it yeah. is supposed to go to several departments, but I honestly don't think that anybody looks at it. Well, that, that's one of the notes I had too, Paulina. And uh, my question was, do we actually do this? But my reading of the regulation, it's the, the uh, onus is on the applicant to do that, not the department or not the not the conservation department. So, um, and they should provide proof that they have notified the other departments. Yeah. So I mean, maybe we can we can approve the checklist too. You know, that's, yeah, definitely. That's the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just you know, you to to update the checklist. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we we can yeah. circulate the checklist around too, so people can take a look at that. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, as people read into the regs, that things will pop out. I I know my I've been on the commission for two years, and you know I'm basing my uh, my comments on that on that two years of experience. Mm. So the the things that I see, uh, you know, <laughs> not not to digress here, but I don't know some of the, some of the commissioners here weren't around when we did the Mosley Ave, forty Mosley Ave, um, and that must have gone through five or six different meetings, and it was probably the most contentious thing that that uh, I've seen, and. We finally got a some compromise, and we finally got something that everybody agreed with, even though it wasn't perfect. And then they go to the the CBA, and they get pushed back, and they finally withdraw. You know, and 
And I remember asking the, the contractor, you know, do you got to get a zoning change for this? Because it looked, and he said, no. Right? And, you know, it was obviously not the case. And something like that, I don't think we, we should have, you know, wasted our time until they got their zoning change. But anyway, that's... Uh, well, it might be it might be good to identify which features in a in a request of us which which features in a project are likely to trigger those zoning uh zoning issues and so that we could flag them yeah well, i mean it's mostly setbacks you know okay okay so uh anything else uh before you adjourn i do just have a brief announcement i just wanted to let the commission know that um I have accepted a position uh, for another town. I will be moving on from Needham here after five years. Uh, mm -hmm. However, I will uh, be continuing on for the evening meetings um, to the extent that there's at least some mm -hmm. remote option uh, for the foreseeable future. So just wanted to let you guys know and thank you for uh, the five five years here in Needham. Will you be with us? Next meeting, Clay? I will be, I, I won't be in the office, but I, I will be here. I'll be here for the next several meetings. I'll, I'll, help, I'll be helping Deb run them, especially while the position is getting refilled. So you'll, mm -hmm. you'll see me probably in the same capacity you see me now, but if you come in to sign documents or uh, send me an email uh, during business hours, there's a good chance I, I will be off, off you're and gonna away. Be, you're going to be so missed. You're so valuable. I'm going to miss Needham as well. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to keep remote meetings, I guess. You know? <laughs> no. Don't tell no. Sue, Sue, just for you. Uh, as long as there is a remote option, including the owl here for the hybrid meetings, I will be in attendance. So I don't want to, I don't want to leave bursting Sue's bubble. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we'll miss you terribly. Big loss. Big you know. loss, Clay. Uh, or happy, happy. He's he's wish, moving up. And, we wish you um, the best yeah. in your new. Yeah, good luck, Clay. Thank you. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. When the golf course is up, d disc golf. We'll see you back there. All right. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't fully disengage from the town until we uh, until we settle the disc golf matter. Mm. <laughs> you will. You, you will never be forgotten, Clay. You've been uh. so been so important well you'll have plenty of time to see me still because I, I will be here for the evening meetings as i said uh you will all see me at least for the the next several meetings probably um it'll take a little while to fill the position i don't you know we haven't we haven't posted anything yet it's still pretty pretty new but i'll be i'll be attending in the capacity that i can uh and helping to facilitate the meetings for the foreseeable future so oh good Oh, I know, I know. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I, I've already done that a couple times. I I tried, yeah, I I tried persuading, but uh, I don't know, didn't it didn't work. I bet. Yeah. It has been wonderful serving the town yeah. of Needham. I've I have no regrets being here. Uh. I definitely value my time and experience um, with the town. So I'm, I'm certainly especially grateful for that and grateful for the commission. Well, you'll be, you'll be so important to wherever you, you, you do go next. I hope so. I hope I can make even some impact. Yeah. Very well. You uh, well. Like, you've been great to work with and uh, I wish you well. Thank you. And as I said, you guys will, you'll see me at least in the evening capacity. So I don't want you guys to feel like you're going to miss me too much initially. Mm -hmm. I think Deb's going to feel most of it uh, on the day to day. Yeah. Um, yep. It's all right. We'll get through. All right. So yeah. if there's nothing else, let's adjourn. I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no more news. All right.
Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, do, do we have a motion? Oh, we got a motion and all of that. Motion I to second adjourn. the motion to adjourn. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Everybody have a good weekend. Take care. Thanks. You too.